Hello, everyone. This is Mike Gormley, and by coincidence, it's the Mike Gormley Show. Uh, I have uh, usually have wonderful guests. Today, I have an extra wonderful guest, uh, a good friend for a long, long time, and a very uh, important factor in uh, live performance for a lot of different people. Frank Gallagher. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mike. Nice to be seen. Yes, well, it's nice to see you. You and uh, you, you were. Uh, are you in Arizona? No, where are you now? I'm I'm at home in Flagstaff, Arizona, in uh, the in the mountains. Good, no snow, right? It's going away. No, now. on the mountains still the snow, but no, it's it's quite it's brisk but and nice. Good. Um, uh, Frank uh, presently I know is working with the B-52s as much as they're they're working, um, which. I, if I remember, about two years ago, they started to do a few dates and have barely stopped since. Is that accurate? Well, we've stopped touring, um, which means we won't we won't do one night as we won't get in a bus. Uh, we do fly dates, so mm -hmm. we'll we'll do one offs and we'll do festivals, and uh, not so much corporate. The cor the corporate thing doesn't seem to be happening, but uh, but. Uh, we used to do a lot of that, but they, yeah, they, they they haven't retired. They've just stopped touring. Yeah, it's, there's a difference because touring's really hard. You know, yeah. uh, it's hard on a lot of people, uh, especially as. <laughs> and I hate to bring up the ageism thing, but as we get older, mm -hmm. it gets harder and harder to crawl into a bunk, you know, and crawl out of one. Right. Every day, so but we we're we're staying pretty pretty busy, and of course. Uh, I've got some dates coming up with Skunk Baxter, and uh, I'm staying very busy. It's great. That's the way it should be. Aye. Uh, how did it all start going back just a few years? <laughs> um, just a few years. Scotland. The short story is, the short story is, I was living in London in 1966. I was working through an agency. I was working, uh, I was a, a trainee hotel manager type. And so I would work in kitchens, dining rooms, and I was working in London. And I and I Saturday afternoon I get down to Carnaby Street with the rest of the idiots, and uh, see what the fashions were. And I bumped into this band from Scotland who were parked, and I recognised the the plate on their van as being from my county, very close, ten mile away, uh, from where I was where I was brought up. And they said, well, if you come back to Scotland, come and look us up. So, you know, I went back to Scotland for a break and uh, I looked them up and I ended up getting in the van and just hanging out for a couple of weekends. And then on the third weekend, they asked me to help with the gear. And so I I, I had no intention of getting into this, but I, I quite like being backstage. I was always attracted to, to the other side. I was never, ever cursed with talent or discipline. So this was it was perfect for me because I wanted to be in the game, but I didn't want to work too hard being a you know a musician or or even even a trained a trained sound technician because back then it, stuff was pretty primitive the gear compared to now although it did sound good you know we had valve amplifiers or tubes as the Americans called them and uh, and it sounded warm and fuzzy and and so I grew up with the technology and that's how I got into it 1966. England won the World Cup then, but I wasn't cheering. <laughs> Let's not get into politics. Between no, no, no. Like... Football, especially football. No, yeah, no kidding. This can be seen uh, other parts of the world, seen and heard. Aye. Yeah. So, um, so that led to a, a whole career, of course. But what, what kind of cemented it for you, if that's a word? um to okay now i'm doing it and who was who was who took you on first because you were fairly new and you know how did it how did it grow the yeah, eye well it, it grew because that little band i used to hang out with i was un, i was just an unofficial member and then the, they broke up and the singer ended up uh go, going with another little band out of edinburgh they, they were from Stirling, and uh and also, I, I would skate every Saturday. I would go to the ice rink a couple of times a week uh, back then. I, I, I was a skater. I, I would just go fast, do laps and go fast. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I skated with a couple of other guys. Turns out they had formed a band, and they said, would you like to manage us? And I said, well, I've never done that before. They said, yeah, but we, 
we've seen you on the phone. You'll, you'll do fine. You'll do fine. And so I ended up managing this wee Scottish band. And we opened for the Casuals in 1968. And they had a like a number one record with a song called Jessamine. And we opened a couple of three shows around Scotland. And so I, I just stowed away in the Casuals van at one point and went out and they were doing the north of England. And, and so I was basically a stowaway. You could call it interning. But, uh -huh. but I was just a stowaway. And, you know, I'd get to sleep... I'd get fed and get a, a bite to eat but and and a, a, and a bed, but nothing else. No money. There was no money involved. But I learned my chops there. I learned some chops. I learned how to how to how how to do that. And then I and then I, it's it's the same thing in, in in rock and roll. You work with one band, they break up, or, or you meet somebody else, and they, there's an offer, and or you just gravity and so but what uh, 1971 i think was when i went professional full on because up to that point I, I would work with bands but i had day jobs or i was on the dole a lot of on the dole in england and working for cash um as you do but uh but uh susie quadso took me on i was working with this band the nashville teens and the guitar player len tucky uh, met up with susie through the drummer uh, through a drummer that we we both knew and uh he uh he, so he took up he left the, the nashville teens and said i've got this new thing do you want to come along i don't know what it's going to be like i said sure and uh it turned out to be zero to 60 in 1.2 seconds she yeah. we had number ones all over the world we were in japan australia europe every month so that that started my international and dare I say, a professional career. But we were still learning as we were going along. We were still learning the technology and growing up with the technology, uh, audio-wise, audio, audio -wise, which got better. So that's when I really started getting my hands on audio gear that was a, a little bit more sophisticated. But the the gear now, I mean, it's just nothing like the past. Nothing. You had, you had to learn I mean, such intricate stuff, I would think. I I had to learn digital digital uh, consoles, but see the thing is I I still mix analog up here. I'm still mixing, although I've got everything I need. I understand the digital world now. Took me up, took me. Uh, I've just pushed faders till something happened, but there are you know there's a there's a a format. The the sound comes in, you process it, and you send it out. The the same application as analog, but I uh. I, I picked it up pretty quick. And a lot of guys said, well, how did you relearn this? YouTube, all the console, uh, what's the word? Tutorials, they're all on YouTube. Or you get the download the manual and yeah. you go through it. But but the, the thing about, about the difference between analog, everything's on the surface, you can see everything. With, with digital, there's stuff running underneath that you can't see and you've got to be careful. Uh -huh. But once I got used to that idea that, oh, there's something running down there, and I know you can bring it to the surface or you can put it back down there. But it was, yeah, it was a, a big learning curve, a big learning curve. But the, the consoles have gotten better and better, and they sound much better than than when they started. Yeah. Do you, um, do you bring any, like a, an assistant along, or is there a, kind of a teacher? No, no. Well, you... When you were working with sound companies, which is how I got to America, I worked with a sound company in 1977, and they sent me out. And the opening act had no engineer, so I ended up by default mixing them. Mm. And then you learn from – that was another way I got got got, uh, got in with bands, is you would mix the support band, and then they would, they would uh, hire the sound company and drag you along as well. Yeah. And so and, – and so, I mixed uh, I mixed Talking Heads on a tour, 1977. Ramon's Talking Heads, a, a, quite a, a legendary tour, and Talking Heads had nobody, so I started mixing them, and uh, that was okay, it. The opening act. Yeah, they were the opening act. So it was a Sire Records a package deal yeah, sent yeah. over, and it was mainly promo for Talking Heads. The Ramones had been to England before and been to Europe, but Talking Heads hadn't, so. It's funny you bring up their name because we're going to go to commercial and we're going to do so by listening to the Talking Heads song called Heaven. We'll be back in a minute. 